Hi friends, welcome to Transformation Unlimited YouTube channel. I am your mentor Jaya Prakash Nagati Harli. Today I am with Mr. L.G. Jyotishwara, a multifaceted personality. Uh, he is the one who has translated my Kannada book Anukshana Anubhavisi. So it is under print now. It's a good news for all of you. Sapna Bokos is publishing this book. Uh, L.G. Jyotishwara sir, Namaskar. Namaskar. Sir, uh, describe in a nutshell your experience while uh, translating my book Anukshana Anubhavisi into English. Well, nutshell is a difficult thing, but I'll make an attempt. <laughs> because uh, translations have been a part of my life for the past 45 years in advertising, marketing, public relations and public speaking. However, this book which you assigned to me to translate into English is in a class by itself. It posed many special challenges which very few other assignments have. One of the highlights of what I did as a translation, I can't call it a translation, it's a transcreation. Because a translation has to be a mirror of the original. Yes. And it should not leave anything which is important and it should not add anything extraneous. Correct. This principle is something which can guide our writing, especially when translations are concerned. Now, when the question of English comes in, I would like to stress and emphasize that Kannada is a language which is doubly better than English. I dare to say this because <laughs> Acharya Vinoba Bhave okay. has called Kannada as the queen of all languages. Of course, English is a good language. It is now a language of international commerce. It's a language which has adapted from many languages. In fact, the latest edition of Oxford Dictionary mm. has borrowed 5,000 terms from Hindi and other Indian languages, yeah, including yeah. chutney. And that is why it has been progressing so well. But still, Kannada is the most scientific, broad, as well as beautiful languages. Therefore, my ability to write in Kannada has enhanced my translation and capacity as a writer of English. I would say that the phraseology which you have employed, the kind of research which you have done for time management. Well, here I would like to mention that uh, JP's research into time management for the past so many years has resulted in a masterpiece. It is evident in every word and every phrase. And that was a very big challenge for me. And I loved that. I loved every moment of it. In fact, I should tell you that I rejected four first copies of the translation. What you have is the fifth. So I was very particular, I was very pussy that your intentions, especially the famous poems of Kannada poets, Correct. they have to be translated correctly. And I feel I have done an excellent job because of my knowledge of Kannada. <laughs> and your, your writing is so simple and lucid that all I had to do was follow that simplicity. And that's where I succeeded. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, please share your insights and the style of narration and use of language. Well, um, there have been hundreds of books about time management and their phraseology is very structured, very formal. It gives you to-do lists, it gives you how to look at and manage time. But here you have departed from that and trod a different path in saying, now look, time management is not just a to-do list and not just arriving on time. It's being alive to the possibility that you can manage time all the time. And we can also align to our life. Absolutely. That's exactly what is the same. Alive, align. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. In fact, I think you have put across that very beautifully, JP. And therefore, the instances you have given are also from real life. Yes. None of them are manufactured. And therefore, they are that much more sincere. And the insight I've got is that every second needs to be a celebration. And, and then the whole of life becomes just a matter of 
going ahead with that celebration. Sir, I am following 100% in my life. It has helped me a lot. That's why I have just given it to the public. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. The next question, how do you think uh, this book is different in its approach to time management? Well, the first thing I like about this book is that there are no lists, to-do lists <laughs> or, you know, memos to write and how to, how to this, how to that. So, you, you put it in a very different and stark and easy style. You, are, you have actually demystified the act of time management as not as just not a checklist but as an approach to live life itself and therefore I think that is the biggest advantage any reader can gain. The insight is that mm. you need to pour yourself into the activity with a single minded laser like purpose and that is the insight I gain as the basic advantage in this book and yeah. therefore it is totally different from many other books on time management. Yeah, thank you for your opinion. Can you point out some special characteristics of this book? Well, for the first thing, it is the simplicity of narration. Okay. None of the ideas are complex. The second very unique thing is the beautiful poems in Kannada, hmm. which stress the importance of living in the moment so well that it, it was almost a cakewalk for me to render it into English. The third is some of the very nice insights you have provided, which are from drawn from real life. None of them is, uh, you know, manufactured or thought of. Now, Kannada, we say in Kannada, Kapola Kalpita. Mm. It is not. <laughs> it, all of them are absolutely experiential uh -huh. and truthful. That thank is you. a big value of this book. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Many people have told me that uh, we should have got this book uh, three or four years back. Uh -huh. uh, in that way, I have got a lot of appreciation. Right. And yes, as sir. they say, better late than never. Yes, th that's what I'm telling them. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the challenges you faced while uh, rendering uh, the translation? As I said, the phraseology. Phraseology, okay. uh, The phraseology of English hmm. uh, is not that strong as Kannada. Hmm. So, in this uh, context, I would like to acknowledge the role played by the Kannada English Dictionary written by Dr. V. Krishna in three volumes that helped me to even render many proverbs very easily into English. It's a classic work which all of you should also look into. It contains 1,64,000 words and translations of 2,000 proverbs. A single man writing for 18 years. That helped me a lot. And then and also the way you have put across the case studies without mentioning specific people. That is another plus here. And overall, the book is an experience which you have to celebrate every moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, sir, this book is going to publish through Sapna Book House. Uh -huh. um, the Sapna Book House is uh, the pioneer uh, in uh, publishing industry. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, they have been doing a great job since many years. I remember as a young student going to their stall in uh, Kempe, near Kempegoda Road. And uh, well, they have really done pioneering service to Kannada in printing books of quality and uh, also presenting them well. And in creating one of the country's finest bookshops, they have done readers of Kannada and India in particular a great service. I, I give them very, very many hearty congratulations. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. L.G. Jyotishwar. Uh, maybe after some time, after uh, the printing of the book, we'll come back again yeah. and discuss about the same. Uh, I also thank my subscribers. Thank you very much. Thank you.